In this video, we will describe and illustrate the methods used to collect the data on forest structure at the natural and created edge. These data will be used to examine edge influence on forest structure. Plot and transect layout. The data on forest structure at the edge were collected along a transect going from the forest edge into the forest. A 60 meter transect was established perpendicular to each edge. We then sampled at six different locations from each edge. 0, 5, 10, 20, 35, and 60 meters. The last sampling location was considered the reference interior forest. At each sampling location, we established a 5 meter by 10 meter tree plot with a 2 meter by 4 meter understory plot nested within it. The long axis of the plot was parallel to the edge. We also established a 10 meter transect that bisected the 5 by 10 meter tree plot. This 10 meter transect was used for estimating down woody materials, DWM, cover. Understory vegetation. In northern and temperate forests, the understory layer contains most of the plant biodiversity. We began sampling with the understory vegetation. If left to the end, you could risk trampling that plot in the process of collecting tree data. The shrub and lower layers of forest vegetation play an important role in forests by providing food sources, hiding cover, and nesting spots. We collected data on species richness and cover of the different categories of understory vegetation. The ground layer all non-woody vascular plants and prostrate slash trailing woody plants, and the shrub layer, erect shrubs, tree saplings, or seedlings, including trees less than 5 cm diameter at breast height. DBH, a standardized measurement at 1.3 meters. Cover of each vegetation type was visually estimated and then converted to a cover class. When estimating cover, a square representing 1% of the plot was used as a guide. With a little planning ahead, you can cut a square of paper to match that 1% of your plot. Holding this up as you work through it is a cheap and effective way of estimating cover. The more you can do to eliminate guesswork in your estimates, the better. Visual Obstruction the development of vertical layers of vegetation is an important characteristic of forest structure. It provides thermal cover, hiding cover, and potential nesting sites for wildlife. Here, we quantify visual obstruction due to vegetation at different heights. We place our pole at the center of the tree plot, kneel down 5 meters away at the plot edge, to view the pole from a 1 meter height. Similar to the understory vegetation, we make a visual estimate cover, grouped in classes, along the height of the pole one from ground level to one meter height, and another for the remainder of the pole in that one to two meter height range. These estimates are done from two directions at each end of the 10 meter downed woody material transect and later averaged. Canopy cover. Canopy cover influences light penetration, thermal cover, below canopy microclimate, and understory vegetation. We measure canopy cover using a convex spherical densiometer. The densiometer is held at elbow height at plot center, where the Robel pole is placed. It's necessary that the densiometer is held level for each measurement. On the surface of the densiometer is a spherical dome of liquid with an air bubble inside and a circular marker to line the bubble up with. When the bubble is inside the circle, you know that you're holding it level. It's the same general concept as a carpenter's level. Record how many of the 17 crosshairs are intercepted by cover. In the example figure, there are 10 crosshairs covered by vegetation. So canopy cover is 10 out of 17, 58.8%. This measurement is done facing each of the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, and then these are averaged. In situations with high canopy cover, it is easier to count the gaps. For example, seven points are not covered, so canopy cover is 17 minus seven out of 17. Live and dead tree density and basal area. Two important components of forest structure are the density and size of trees. Together, these allow us to quantify measures of biomass, such as total basal area and total volume related to carbon. Having information on both density and size of trees provides important insight into the structure of the forest. For example, two forests could have similar basal area, but for very different reasons. Many small trees, or fewer large trees. Such differences have important habitat implications. Height is obviously related to age, and variation in height among trees in a stand can tell us about regeneration processes and successional development of the forest. In the larger 5 by 10 meter tree plot, we quantified the density, size, and diameters for both live and dead trees. We do this by measuring the diameter at breast height. Again, DBH, 
at 1.3 meters. With some simple mathematics, we can calculate the breast height basal area for each tree from the diameter. Diameter divided by 2 is the radius, and the area is then pi r squared. Later, we can sum the basal area for each tree. Trees and snags were defined as those with stems greater than 5 cm dbh and taller than 1.3 meters. For each live tree rooted in the plot, we recorded the species and its dbh. For each snag, we recorded the dbh and assigned it a condition class. Tree height. We also measured the height for the largest diameter live individual of each tree species. This was done using a Sunto clinometer. We positioned ourselves roughly one tree length away from the tree. When putting this into practice yourself, the calculations are much easier if you're working with nice round numbers, something like 10 or 20 meters away from the tree. You'll often find that 10 meters is too close to get an accurate reading, making 20 meters a fairly typical and ideal distance, so long as you can easily reach it with your transect tape and still have a clear line line of sight to the tree of interest. After measuring out this horizontal distance away from the tree, hold the clinometer up so you can look through it with one eye and still see the target tree with the other. Measurements are made by tipping your head and the clinometer up towards the top of the tree or down towards the base. Some clinometers have more than one scale on them. If you point it all the way to the sky allowing the dial to roll all the way to the end, you'll see a little percent marker. You'll have a positive reading for the top and negative reading for the bottom. The dial within the clinometer swings freely and is weighted to point down with gravity. As you tip the clinometer and zero remains pointed flat, your eye follows along the moving scale as you point it towards the tree. When you're looking down at the bottom of the tree, make sure to record that as a negative number. You are observing below the flat zero horizon. Using this equation, we can take the horizontal distance we are standing from the tree, along with those angles of measurements being recorded as per percentages and calculate the height of the tree. We have our top percent measurement minus the bottom percent measurement. Keep in mind we are subtracting a negative value. Divide this by 100 to give you that final percentage. Multiply that by your horizontal distance to the tree and we have our tree height. And finally, dead wood. Large pieces of downed dead wood are an extremely important part of the physical structure of forests, with an important role in terms of ecosystem processes and provision of habitat. There are several different ways to sample downed dead woody materials, DWM. From them, you can get an estimate of the cover of DWM, line intercept transects, or the density, number of logs per area determined using fixed area plots. Each of these is useful in different circumstances. In all cases, it is valuable to assess the condition of the downed log because this influences its function and value in the ecosystem. We will use the line intercept method to quantify cover of downed wood of different decay stages. Along the 10 meter line bisecting your plot, for each piece of dead wood intersecting the line, record the length along the transect and assign it to a decay class. Using your calipers to measure, include only pieces of wood that are greater than 5 cm in diameter at their largest point, omitting any pieces of wood smaller than that. If anything in this video was unclear and requires further explanation, please first consult the lab handout. Things are written and explained there in greater detail, and might make more sense to you personally in writing. If anything needs further clarification, please feel free to reach out to the TAs, and we can provide alternative explanations and help ensure that you fully understand these sampling methods. Being able to comprehend and visualize that methodology will go a long way into helping you write your papers. We're here to help, so please ask any questions you might have.